Hey everyone, this is Prashant. We will be covering very interesting topic today. This is a topic where most of us don't have much knowledge about it and should be taught in school. But we will be covering this topic today for developers. The topic is tax saving for developers. So our guest today is Shifali Kawatra. She is a CA with over six years of experience and will guide us today. We'll talk about like what are the instances that you can incur taxes in India how much at what slab you will pay and third is what are the deductions and exemptions that you can claim in order to save taxes in india so this is more of an india concent concentrated webinar but if you have any questions related to anything else we'll take it up at the end of the session first we'll talk about like what are the cases where you can incur taxes in india if you are a resident resident meaning if you're in india for 182 days and above then only you have to pay taxes in india if you're not a resident you should not but resident also has one more catch is that in the past four years you have to be like 60 days in india or 365 days in the previous year whatever is there then you'll be called as a resident so resident is a very a massive term here but uh, the second part which comes is like is the income have been earned or received in india if either of the cases is there then you have to pay taxes and if not if either both of them is not there then you don't have to pay taxes in india what is it that on which slab that you have to pay taxes in India is will come to the next slide. So if your income is about like up to 2.5, I think everybody knows that they don't have to pay taxes in India. But what if your income is above 2.5 until 5, then also you don't have to pay any kind of tax in India because it's governed by rebate. I don't think so you should know about that. But if your taxable income is coming until 5 lakhs, you don't have to pay any kind of tax. But what if your income is more than 5 lakhs and up till 10 lakhs so that's how you you are taxed at 25k which is up to 5 lakhs you have to pay 25k if your income goes above 5 lakhs okay and then 20% of 5 to 10 lakhs bracket and then if your income is more than 10 lakhs you have to pay 30% flat tax of any income above 10 10 lakhs so up to 10 lakhs it would be 125k 25k until 5 lakhs and then 100k which is 1 lakh rupees add from 5 lakhs to 10 lakhs so 5 lakhs into 20 percent that's how 125k comes into plus 30 percent of your tax bracket so this is the tax structure in india but you can reduce your income like when you show your income in the income tax return you can reduce your income through a list of exemptions and deductions the so next i'm going to cover about deductions given to employer and deductions given to employee so let's say you're an employee of XYZ company and then you have like this much CTC and then they will tax your amount and that's how they will deduct a TDS on your salary at that particular amount. So what's that about? So employer has like n number of deductions that they can give to their employees but you have to give all these declarations to your employer if you don't give these declarations to your employer then you might end up paying more taxes so at the start of every year so every year you have to be a little more aware about this year so in india the year is from april to march and it's not governed by calendar year. It's always governed by financial year. FY, you would have seen this term in many instances. So financial year for, let's say, 2022 was 1st April 2022 until 31st March 2023. So any kind of deductions can be claimed if you report your income until 31st March 2023. If you have not done with the employer, you can go ahead and do it right now. Financial year is like the year which we are currently presently in. In taxation, you have to be aware of one more term called as assessment year. So assessment year is nothing but one year plus financial year. So if my financial year is 1st April 2022 till 31st March 2023, so my assessment year would be financial year plus one year, meaning my assessment year would be 1st April 2023 until 31st March 2024. So what's the logic behind it? The logic is pretty simple. When we submit our income tax returns, we will always get assessed, meaning they will calculate one year next. So if my I'm submitting the return for 1st 2022 returns, it will get assessed only in the next year. That is why it is called an assessment year. So in your income tax return, whenever you fill it, you will find this term assessment year. Do not confuse it with financial year. And I see many people doing that. 
so coming back to the tax deductions by employer so every year i told that you have to give your declarations to employer so what are these declarations so first is the house rent allowance so any kind of house rent that you pay to your landlord can be claimed as deductions so uh, you can just go away and give this details to your employer and they will give you a deduction for that second is leave travel allowance so what is leave travel allowance it's like in every year any kind of amount that you spend on traveling which is only limited to and and limited to is the main phrase over here limited to your journey which is a train journey or your flight journey only that will be reimbursed uh not reimburse can be claimed as a deduction in your income taxes so you can get that deduction of your flight charges or your train charges or whatever it is basically the conveyance charges that you're incurring when you reach the destination is something that you can get an exemption from and there is one more important catch over here is that these leave travel allowances can be claimed twice in a bracket of 4 years so if you have claimed for this year and the next year you will not be able to claim for 2025 and 2026 so you have to be very careful that wherever your travel uh, amount spend is much more on flights those two years you can claim then coming back to standard deduction standard deduction i think most of the people would be aware is like 50k of your total income you'll get 50k in your uh, deduction and it's like constant every year and then there's professional tax so professional tax is not always will be same for every state every state have different kinds of taxes for example in bangalore you have to the employer has to pay 200 rupees per month as your tax so 2400 is the amount that we can claim every year but whereas in delhi there is no profession tax at all so if your employer charges then only you have to claim if they are not charging you should not claim and it's very much evident in your form 16 returns uh, that the employer give you so moving on to the next topic which i think would be more uh, useful to all of you guys is about tax deduction employee so employee also has n number of deductions to claim for and first i think this also you would know better is atc atc is until 1.5 lakhs is something you can claim so here what are the common deductions that you can use in atc is like ppf if you invest into pps or if you invest into mutual funds there are various mutual funds called as tax saving mutual funds where you can invest any amount in there up to limited to 1.5 lakhs rupees is that what you can claim in atc but the catch over here is also that you have to invest that amount for 3 years together so there's a lock in period if you invest 1.5 lakhs into a mutual fund for the next 3 years you cannot sell that mutual fund so you have to be very uh, vigilant that you do not spend that amount but what you can do here is you can rotate the amount so every 3 years you can put the first initial investment so that you are also not blocking your entire amount in a particular mutual fund but also using the amount that you first invested so that is something that you can try in your uh, normal investment cycle as well third is what many people use is about uh, lic meaning in any kind of insurance premium paid towards your life so that premium whether it be term insurance or any kind of premium towards your life would be treated as a deduction in your atc deductions for income tax purposes and other deductions there are many other deductions which are there like if in your know, investment into fd investment into ulip schemes but that is not many people uses i am telling you the main uh, more used deductions in your income tax uh, purposes next is atccd so it is also a very uh, interesting deduction that you should use and you should claim more often because it uh, encourages you to invest into your pension there is a scheme called as nps or national pension scheme where you can invest um, up till 50k of uh, amount every year and you can claim a deduction in your income tax returns so this is also a very good way of investment because according to your risk the your employer can also give that if your employer is offering an npa scheme i wish i should say that you can go ahead and take it because it's not limited to 50k it goes above and beyond your 50k threshold that you get from your employer whereas that um, the same deduction is not available in employee and coming on to the next deduction is atd which is about uh, 25k meaning 25000 inr you can uh, invest not invest this is much more of for insurance thing so you can pay into a medical insurance and claim up to 25000 worth of deduction for you uh, your uh, dependents and your kids 
so if there is a family where you have you can up claim only up to 25000 but if you are you are also claiming for your parents the deduction has an addition of 50000 rupees for parents which are senior citizens which is above 60 years of age so you can go to atgg which is towards the rent paid for example you do not claim the hra given by your employer so you can go ahead and claim atgg which is rent paid if you are not claiming the house rent allowance by uh, from your employer so this deduction amounts to 60k it's limited to uh, 5000 per month so only 60k can be claimed and then we have attta which is interest on your savings account so if you are getting a savings account interest about 10000 rupees in a year then you can claim this deductions as well and then lastly is ate which is relevant is that if you are using or paying a higher education loan and there is an interest on that so that interest component can be claimed in your income tax returns which is about atc so there is no limit to it you can claim an infinite amount of uh, interest over here now this slide is only for the remote workers if you are having a remote job where you can work at the comfort of your home and you don't uh, have to go to office so what you can do here is in many case remote jobs are from uh, countries apart from india so it's mostly uh i would say that but i can be wrong so what you can do in those circumstances if you are employer agrees you can ask that instead of being treated as an employee of your company can i be treated as a consultant so what will happen if you are treated as a consultant might be a question so there is a very added advantage given to the uh, income earned from profession in india so let's say you're earning an income of 20 lakh rupees from the employer and they have agreed to be treated you as a consultant you can go into your income tax uh, uh, website and file a return where you can treat your 50% of the income like 20 lakhs and 50% of that is 10 lakh rupees as a deduction altogether and this is in addition to the deduction that i covered earlier so employee deduction that we covered is 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 addition to that you can treat 10 lakh rupees as a deduction and you only have to pay taxes on the rest 10 lakh rupees so imagine you are 30% of the tax getting saved which is a immense deduction that you can claim but you for that you have to be treated as a consultant not as an employee if your employer is filing or submitting your taxes as an employee then you cannot be treated under this particular category rather you would have to pay taxes on the whole 20 lakhs amount so try and talk to your employer and ask him or her for being a consultant in their company so that way you can save a lot of taxes okay so coming on to the next topic is that what if your taxes or income is more than 20 lakhs so if your income is more than 20 lakh rupees then you would also have to be governed under gst so this is a little con under being considered as a consultant because uh it creates another compliance requirement for you as per the indian law standards and then irrespective of whether you want to pay or not it is a mandatory requirement where you have to be registered under the gst law if you are gross receipts if your income in hand is above 20 lakhs rupees so uh there is another requirement but that requirement there is also a positive side to it is that if you are providing your services meaning if your employer is apart from india any foreign land you are giving services to let's say us so you are working for an employer which is in us and you are you are a consultant and then they are providing you income so you are giving service to us in literal sense of the indian tax laws so that is called as an export income where if you even if you are earning unlimited amount there is no amount there you don't have to pay the gst to it so it's exempted for gst but exempted for gst uh meaning here it's that that you still have to report your income and uh, exempted would be a wrong word for this it should be a zero rated income so you have to pay 0% tax for this 
So, but you still have to register for GST, and you have to take the GST registration, and then you have to also file the GST returns, which would be quarterly once, and then yearly one more return has to be filed. So. i know it's a cumbersome process but it will actually uh, help you also to be taxed at 50% of your direct income tax and 0% of your gst so i would recommend that if you are working as a remote person you always always ask for being a consultant and that way you don't have to pay much taxes you have to pay half the tax and in fact it's even lesser with that i would like to end my talk and then if i would want to take any questions if there are any so uh, there is one question from shivam gupta he wanted to know mm -hmm. can we claim 100% tax deduction if we fall between 5 to 10 lakh slab and mm -hmm. if not what is the maximum amount that we can save you can only claim rebate i think this is the question that you are asking that up to uh, 5 lakh rupees you can Take the hundred percent deduction, but if it goes beyond five lakh rupees, it's it's like five lakh and one rupees also. You come to the third slab that I showed, twenty five thousand plus twenty percent of any additional rupee earned. So when you are in the five to ten lakh bracket, I would suggest that you increase your tax deduction. If I do a summation, ATC one point five lakhs, we get ATCCD about fifty. Get more. We get eighty TTA, ten thousand rupees. So you can claim like up to, and, and up to is a correct word to to stress upon here is that it is like three lakhs maximum deduction that you can claim if your total deductions fall behind the income up to five lakhs. Then you don't have to pay any taxes. But if it's going above five lakhs, then you have to pay taxes even on on a single rupee. The, is it uh, applicable for the internship as well? by default any kind of taxes for the income earned as stipend from internships are not really taxable so it's exempt for entire thing so you don't even have to file your income tax returns uh being an intern do they need to pay any taxes so in case of internship income it is not really deducted by an employer as tds but uh, you don't uh, have to pay taxes uh, until 2.5 lakhs and until 5 lakhs if there is an income but beyond that you have to pay taxes which will be the best country to save taxes to uh, working as a remote job so best country to save taxes would be the middle east countries and in that to dubai because there is not tax there is no tax for income earned in those countries so if you want to save the maximum amount as taxes the best to work in the middle eastern countries thanks a lot for your time thank you shifali